Okay, so this time I'm finally going to get round to showing you a junctions giving you monads in this street diagram language. So as I said before, I hopefully didn't overemphasize this, not over my pudding here, um, this is sort of where we see the, really see the utility of these string diagrams. Um, I should point out, as I, I've been told I should point out, I mean string diagrams are wonderful things, but it's only one point of view, and it's sort of my uh, favorite point of view for doing things like that. But one of the disadvantages is you never see objects. So we're just thinking of categories, functors, and natural transformations as a package there. So we're not seeing any internal structures in categories. So we're just looking at uh, sort of that as a two category, as we'll perhaps see later. Um, so th these kind of meta things, it, it's quite useful to do with these diagrams. But when you're actually you know, crunching away at specific monads, uh, this isn't necessarily so helpful. But to do this stuff, it's wonderful. Right, OK, so we're going to have an adjunction. So between C and D, we, we've got uh, F and G. F is left adjoint to G. So what does that mean? It means we have two natural transformations. We have epsilon, uh, which goes from FG to the identity, eta going from the identity to GF. And these have to satisfy these two relations, formerly called the, uh, tri uh, the triangle identities, not the triangle inequalities. Uh, but here, they sort of uh, attain new names for obvious reasons, either snake identities or, or the, well, it's not the wiggle identity, what is it? It's something like that, but I can't remember. It'll come to me in a second. Right, so we've got this data. We've got an adjunction, and we want to produce, from that data, we want to produce a monad. So what was a monad? So a monad was a functor on, on a category, together with two natural transformations, the product and the unit, which are going to satisfy some identities. And we, it's going to be obvious what these things are from, from this setup. So, well, you, you already know uh, what these things are going to be, but what, so what, what is our T going to be? So we've got to produce a monad T from a category to itself, where you know it, what it is. It's, it's just GF. So we just, so this is one of what our monad is going to be. We're going to go F and then back. To C, so this is sort of C, C, and we got to we, we we sort of nip into D in the middle. Okay, so so what is our product going to be? Well, it's going to be pretty much forced on us as soon as we see what this product is supposed to be. So it's supposed to go from T T to T. So what's T T? So that's at the bottom. This has to be. Uh, I don't know if it's sufficiently big. So we do G, then we do F, then we do G, and then we do F. And we've got to go to G, F. OK. So we're going to somehow uh, build ourselves a natural transformation. Now, all, all, we, all the information we've got is these two things at the top here. That's, that's the only natural transformations we can play with. So it's pretty obvious what, what a sensible thing to do is. We just use eat uh, epsilon, standard problem, eat epsilon problem. That's an epsilon, a little cat there. And we just take sort of the identity on G and the identity on F. So there's not a lot else we could actually do there. Uh, similarly, we're pretty much forced as to what, what we should take here. Uh, so we're going from the identity up to on C up to T, but T was just do G and then do F. And uh, how can we go from there to there? Well, look, it's eta. That's Essentially, so we define uh, our product and our unit in that way. So what we have to check is that these satisfy our identities for the monad. So we had we had the unital identities and we had the associativity identities. So and they're just going to be they're just going to be ridiculously easy in this in this setup. So let's have a look. Which one should we do first? Let's 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 go for the uh, the unital thing. So we have these two unital relations. You can remember them, which said, let's do this one on this side. So if we just have our unit and then multiply it in, then that's the same as doing that thing. So we need to show that this is true. Okay, so let's just expand out the, uh, the thing we've got here. So the right hand side is equal to, um, what is this? So we start with 
with a G and an F, and we put in a unit, so we just wobble this in here. Okay, so if I just put a solid line across there, you can see you can see that's what I've done. I've got identity uh, and unit, and then I just do have the product, so it's just these, these things. But we've got this relation, which shares this little uh, uh, snake relation, says that we can just pull that straight. Okay, so this little thing here can be pulled straight, so by the the snake relation or the, the triangle equality, with this is just the same as. Uh, so, so what are we going to do? This this bit here gets replaced by by a straight line. Okay, but that is just is just the thing we wanted. So this is just a T. Oh, uh, easy way to write that. So that's just. A so you see immediately, you see immediately that this is just follows straight from the, the triangle relation. Then we've got the, the of course, the, the one the other way around is exactly the same. Okay, and it's so exactly the same. I won't actually draw it in. Uh, it's just going to use the other triangle uh, relation. So we've got two out of the three. So the other relation we needed to use, uh, sorry, the other identity we needed to show was the associativity identity. So get rid of that. And the associativity identity was just saying, let's multiply two things at the bottom, and then multiply in a third. That's exactly the same as multiplying the two things and then at the bottom and then multiplying the thing in on the all. So is is this true? Okay, so let's just have a look at what we've got. So the left hand side is going to be just to expand this out. I'm not exactly sure how big this bit I'm, I'll, I'll just Quite long along the bottom here, so we get G F G F whoops G stick there F G F well, we didn't need to make it quite that big. Um, so what are we doing? So we're multiplying these two together first. So we go like that. I've left myself enough room. And then we multiply these two together, so we just combine these this F and this G that. Okay, so now we can just use the interchange law. So here we, we can just simplify this picture a little a little straighter. It's actually that. So we can use the interchange law to just alter the order in which these two natural transformations uh, are done because they're acting on two different things. So we just use the interchange law to move this one down and move that one up. So this is equal to Following. Is this going to look appropriate? Well, we'll see. Uh, so that. And that. So this is just the interchange. Interchange. Uh, and we have F's, G's, F, G's, F. Is that right? G, F, G, F, G, F, G, F. G, F. G, F, and that, of course, was just that. If you un unplug this, this is exactly just do the little cap there, and then join the others with the little cap. So that's exactly the thing we have on the right-hand side. OK. OK, so out of time, and I've, I've finished. Yes, so we see instantly that if we start off with this data, satisfying these relations, define the monad in this way, then it automatically, just for obvious sort of topological move type reasons gives us a monad.